Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar on understanding residential energy usage. My name is Javier Duque. I am Data Panelist Manager at Carto, and I will be co-hosting this webinar with Clifford. Hi, Clifford. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is Clifford. I'm the founder of Dorda, uh, and I, we supplied the data to um, Carto, who we're in a partnership with in terms of um, offering further insights into the UK. Thank you, Clifford. Um, so this is our agenda for today's webinar. Firstly, we will introduce Carto and our data observatory. After that, Clifford will give you an overview of DORDA and the residential energy performance data set. And then we will cover some Carto data visualizations to understand residential energy usage. In the last section, we will answer your questions. So please use the Q&A uh, panel during the session. Um, so, Carto is a, a one-stop shop for simpler, faster, special analytics, where our customers can create competitive advantage, optimize business processes, and predict future outcomes by using Carto's technology, services, and data. Our data observatory has the latest and greatest third-party location data, reducing the time spent gathering, evaluating, and cleaning data. We offer a fast licensing process thanks to existing agreements with data providers and ready to query and up-to-date data. It has more than 11,000 open and premium data sets, 10 categories and 43 sources. As we can see in the screenshot, the data catalog allows us to, to filter by country, category, license, source and place type. DORDA is among our premium sources as I as a, and as I said, today we are going to take a closer look at it with Clifford and a special analysis from Carto. So now we are going to, to start a poll. If you would like to go, Clifford. Um, yes. So what we'd like to know is before we run through the rest of the presentation is where people think the energy price cap will peak. So do we think it's going to be correct? on terms of 3,000 pounds, which is what's forecast at the moment. Do we think it's going to increase up to 4,000? Or do we think it's going to go over 4,000? As all this is quite pertinent to the data we're about to take you through. So if you're ready, then vote now. Okay, so we're seeing some of the results coming through now, and it looks like the majority of people are at the moment going for up to 4,000. Uh, some very optimistic people think it's going to stay around 3,000, and a couple of more uh, bearish people are going for uh, over 4,000. So to go in a bit about Dorda, so what we've done is, I mean, Dorda as a company itself, we specialize in the uh, research, aggregation, and the linking of a wide variety of data sets. So we, we process approximately 2,000 data sets per month from a variety of data sources from, well, let me see that, but 1,500 data sources. And then we link them into one of three things. So we connect them onto a company ID, so we have extensive information on over 12 million companies in the UK. We link data to a address. So we have information on 35 million addresses in the UK, which covers commercial and residential. And then we also link data on output areas, which are sort of a, the lower end of a census data gathering output area, which allows you to compare two data sets across the country because uh, the rough size of an OA will be the same uh, wherever you place them. So you can compare property prices in Wales with property prices in Kent, for example. The data that we presented to um, Carto, which Javier has um, done the analysis on, is a grouping of these data sets. So these include the deprivation index, which is um, scoring the UK from wealthiest to 
um, the least wealthy areas, which is taken from our Georgia Stats data set based on OA. We've also taken energy data from an address level, and then we've grouped them onto the OA, which is what will be revealed on the uh, visualizations. And then we've also included the price paid and sales data from Georgia Stats and also Georgia Property. So again, we're sort of grouping data points together to achieve greater insights using our indexes. And then all the addresses have been grouped in output areas via our stats product. So we can link our postcode in a way, an LS away or a town, depending on what you want to do. Each of these data sets that we're running in the background are actually refreshed on a monthly basis. So we will pull them down from the original source, link them together and serve them all up via our hosted solution. And the back end of that, Javier runs a script once a month which then pulls the data through to the Carto platform, which gives you instant access to it. So I think that's what I've got, Javier. So let's see what you've done. Perfect. Thank you very much, Clifford. So, one second. Um, so um, now we are going to see how residential energy performance data and spatial analysis can be used to understand the impact of energy costs on communities and how to ultimately help reduce costs and overall energy consumption. The, the Guardian has an article that shows how deprived the different parts of England, or of England are. According to this, Liverpool has the highest number of deprived areas. Analyzing the residential energy performance data set from DORDA, we have created a carto visualization where we have selected the most deprived Liverpool output areas. You can see these areas in the map filled with the color palette that goes from yellow to purple. The different color intensity shows the, the current estimated annual energy cost for heating the property in GBP, where yellow is the cheapest and purple the most expensive. The map shows that some of the poorest areas from Liverpool have annual bills more expensive than 1,000 pounds, which can be which can cause difficulties to pay it. The top widget on the right hand side shows account of the current energy rating, where A is the most energy efficient and G is the least energy efficient. Most of the output areas are D, which means they are not energy efficient and explains the high cost uh, on bills. Contrary to the, to the previous uh, case, now we are going to analyze the richest areas from the UK. Windsor and Maidenhead are the places of choice for UK millionaires. Analyzing Dorda's data set, we have created a carto visualization and filtered the wealthiest output areas from, Winford, uh, from Windsor and Maidenhead. These areas are filled with the color palette that goes from yellow to purple, same as the previous slide. The different color intensity shows the current estimated annual energy costs for heating the property in GBP, where yellows is the, yellow is the cheapest and purple the most expensive. We can see that some of the richest areas from Windsor and Maidenhead have annual heating bills under 500 pounds, which is a very advantageous situation for its inhabitants. In this slide, we are going to see now some, some areas with a great potential for improving their energy rating. According to a, a recent article from This Is Money UK, based on an analysis carried out by Halifax, 15 million homes in England and Wales could need energy efficiency improvements to meet the proposed target on an AP, of an APC C rating by 2035. And A rating is the most energy efficient and G the least efficient. With the goal of reaching net zero carbon emissions by 2050, the government is considering introducing EPC regulations that could force homeowners to make improvements to their properties. Some examples of improvements that, the, of improvements that can boast an EPC rating are, for example, uh, ensuring ad adequate insulation, upgrading windows with double glazing or having adequate hot water tank insulation. Analyzing Dorda's data set, we have selected output areas from 
two widgets on the right hand side of the map with information about the average current and potential energy rating. It shows a lot of potential for improvement with most D rating becoming potentially more energy efficient with B or C ratings. The map shows the Liverpool output areas that have an average potential A, B, or C rating with a current average rating of D, E, F, or G. The purple color is for the letter A, the red color is for the B, and the yellow is for the C. So he, we can see with this that there is a lot of uh, room for improvement. And on the next slide, we will cover an estimate of the money that uh, we could save. So this is uh, uh, based on a, on a recent uh, article from This is Money UK that says the, <clears throat> there will be a significant gap in the energy bill between most and least eco-friendly homes, which will get bigger with energy price increases. Well, analyzing Dorda's data set and selecting Liverpool, and selecting Liverpool, we are showing in the map the difference between the current and potential average annual heating costs of the properties by output areas. The darker color shows the output areas with the biggest potential to save on heating bills, with some of them surpassing 1,000 pounds. These are output areas with low energy efficiency ratings, where improvements in insulation, among other upgrades, can help them to save money and get better rating. So this is the, the last data visualization. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Now we are going to, to have the Q&A session. Let's see the questions that we have got. Sorry, that was on view. <laughs> uh, so one of the questions we got is how often is the data refreshed? So in terms of uh, from the Carso platform, it's refreshed on a monthly basis. Uh, from our perspective, uh, our platform, we update, update our data from daily, depending how frequently the publisher wishes to release, in which case we'll put it through. Um, so monthly, I suppose is the answer in this particular case. Yep. Uh, do we have any information on commercial properties? Um, yes. So similar to the ratings for residential addresses, uh, of which there's probably about 28 million, I think, in the UK, there's also information available on about 4 million commercial properties. The characteristics of the data captured are slightly different, but you could arrive at similar sort of visualizations and analytics as are presented in Javier's slides. Uh, how do we join the data? Uh, okay, so as a business, we have to process probably about uh, 10 to 15 million addresses per month. So we did look at off-the-shelf solutions to do that, but um, they didn't really fit our needs due to the variances in the way that it's delivered and served. So we have to develop our own in-house matching solutions, uh, which are current patent pending, which allow us to um, Link all our addresses and all our company names in a standardized binary way, which ensures that you have a historical feed of the data. And it also means that any data being consumed and presented back out is cross referenceable across the entire platform. That's all the questions we've got. Do you have any questions your side, Javier? No, uh, thank you. I would. Uh, oh, something else here. Uh, what are the publication dates of the articles and the time period of the data displayed? I suppose that's one for you, Javier. Yeah, um, I haven't got here the, the date for the articles, but I will make sure to forward it to, to this person. Um, the time period uh, of the data was for the, the last five years, right? Uh, Correct, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, and there is also an article available, a like technical article, I think, on Carto about how to recreate this yourself. So we can send a link out as part of that as well. Yes. It allows you to rebuild it yourself. Uh, just a shame no one mentioned um, climate in Chile, Britain um, activists. Yes because um, they would have loved this article because at the end of the day they keep on hanging on about insulation and I think your visualizations reveal we shouldn't be subsidizing energy but insulating houses <laughs> so it was a good insight uh, so unless we've got any more questions which I don't think there are so back to you then Javier Perfect. So yes, if we don't have more questions, um, we we have finished. Uh, so thank you very very much uh, for joining us. It has been a pleasure, and hope to see you in the next webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Clifford. Thanks a lot. Speak to you soon. Speak to you Bye. Soon. Bye.